does this work, this view? Because basically what's happened is, it, oh, you know the bit that connects your ring light to your camera? Well, it broke off inside my camera. So now my camera has got this like sticky thing coming out of it, like a screw, like this big. So it can't be balanced on a flat surface anymore. I can't get it off, it's stuck. But anyway, hi guys. Welcome back to my channel. I was going to put on a nice jumper and stuff for this, but I just couldn't be bothered. Um, so what I wanted to talk to you, wait, what? I haven't done this in so long. <laughs> this is why I'm being weird. But basically, it's the end of the year, isn't it? And I thought, I haven't posted on YouTube in a while. Um, so I need to really update you on my life. Not that you might care, but it's just what I do. Do you know what I mean? And also, a lot's happened and it's just an entertaining time in my life, to be honest. And you all need to hear what's going on. So... I thought I'd do a little recap on 2021. It's probably been the wildest year of my life. Yeah, I could say that. Not the wildest. Well, yeah, the wildest. I've done the most stuff. Even though it feels like fucking hell, like COVID and all that stuff. Oh, I need to not swear in case they fucking demonetize I mean, shit. <laughs> in case they demonetize me. I think they're a bit sensitive of it these days, aren't they? But yeah, like considering COVID and everything, I've done like a lot of shit. I mean, stuff. So... We need to talk. Just pretend we're at like a sleepover or something. We're just having a pillow talk. Because I can't get in any other position than this at the moment. Because you won't be able to see me. We went into lockdown again in, over Christmas. And New Year into 2021, didn't we? So it wasn't a good start. And I felt feel like I felt a bit claustrophobic at that time. All I wanted to do was just escape England and get out. So luckily I'd been working like the last like nine months or something at a job before my boss randomly disappeared and didn't pay me my last wage but it doesn't matter because I've still got his MacBook Pro um but yeah so because of that I'd managed to save up quite a bit of money like not a lot but like seven grand right and the intent was to spend that traveling Asia I've always wanted to travel Thailand and Bali um all that jazz Australia so when I got to like 10k I was gonna go um but yeah we went into lockdown again and I think Thailand, all Asia and all that was shut. So I thought, where else can I go? And at the time, um, I was seeing loads of influencers like going to Dubai and stuff. And, and also just people just seemed to be moving there. And on Instagram, it looked like Dubai wasn't locked down at all. So I was like, fucking hell, why aren't I in Dubai? So I managed to get a job in Dubai as a bloody private equity consultant. By the way, I've never been to uni in my life, college, whatever you want to call it. Like, I... I have never done sales, nothing, but I just got lucky. I think it is half pretty privileged, to be honest. I'm not saying I'm, like, fucking stunning, but I'm pretty, I know that. So I'm just acknowledging my privilege because probably, like, if you were, like, a man and you weren't stereotypically attractive, then it'd probably be harder to get a job in, a, in an area that you've never worked in before in a different country. So... But basically all I did was message a load of CEOs on LinkedIn and ask them if they've got any openings in their job, in their offices in Dubai. And a couple came back to me, but one specifically, um, and he was really nice and he knew someone I knew, so it was a good little connection we had there. And he watched all my YouTube videos and looked at all my social media, so he kind of felt like he knew me, so that was an advantage as well, like before I even spoke to him physically on the phone. And um, he ended up, saying to me that he thinks I'd be good at sales and I was like bloody hell but I've got a whole story time on this Dubai experience like a couple videos previous to this one so you can go watch that if you're like interested in the whole journey and how I felt about it etc but um long story short I trained how to be a private equity consultant <laughs> for like a month from home and then I did well so he flew me out to Dubai paid for my flat like I didn't have any rent he was really nice, but I lived in like the desert. It wasn't quite Dubai, it was like half an hour away from Dubai. So I'd work all week and then I'd go to Dubai on the weekends. I made loads of friends and I met like the best people. Like overall, the people there weren't really my cup of tea, but I managed to dig out the good ones. Um, and I made like a handful of really good friends. I'm so glad I met. Like literally like I'm, like, I'm so fucking happy I met them. You know when you think back and you're like, wow, thank goodness I went just purely for the people. That was the best, like, takeaway I got from it. Um, but yeah, I was there for five months and I'd never lived on my own before. So it was like a whole new experience. Never moved country either. So I was doing it all at once. 
and I liked living on my own for about a month but then after that it started to get quite hard and it got really hot there and I got really bad like mental health issues when I was out there because I was getting lonely and the job was too stressful for me and I, I just felt this inner resistance to where I was and what I was doing um so eventually I gave in and just followed my gut and left because I just knew it wasn't for me on a permanent level like <coughs> I like Dubai for a holiday destination but to me it has no soul don't take offense if you live there or you like it. it's just my preference like I don't I didn't feel like the soul of it and it just wasn't for me so I followed my gut I really did believe that if I left then the universe would reward me for following my instincts I, do, I believe in intuition and all that shit so then I left Dubai and I went and I had I left Dubai with the exact same amount of money that I went there with because it just worked out that way like I spent as much as I earned back if that makes sense I think I think I said that wrong but I, I left with the exact same amount I went there with so that was good I didn't lose any money but I had a great experience you know I learned a lot actually from my boss out there he taught me how to be smart with money and there was a lot of takeaways I got from working with him even though I really despised sales I was good at it but I just hated it it's too stressful mate I was on the phone to like millionaires all day convincing them what they should do with the money which it was too fucking hard but I earned a good amount of money and I left and I went straight to Italy on my own <laughs> so I did a solo trip I, well I had to go somewhere before I came home um, to England because that was just like the Covid rule so I had to go to like a green or amber country before I come back to England so I chose um, Rome because I just felt you know there's loads of fit Italians there and it just felt like a Lizzie McGuire dream and I was TikToking all this time by the way like, I was TikToking all my experience I did a couple of YouTube videos but I had the fucking best time in Rome like when I got to Rome, I realised that I definitely made the right decision by going to, like, by leaving Dubai because, like, it, Italy would just felt more me straight away. I was like, yeah, see, that's how I know Dubai went for me because this feels more homely. But yeah, I had, like, the best solo trip ever. Um, I met loads of cool people there as well, mainly boys because I was meeting people off Tinder, really. I relied on Tinder a lot. But it's really good. Tinder's great for when you're travelling. I actually said it to, like, Italy before like two weeks prior to getting there so that I already had like a couple of people I was talking to so that I could go out and they could show me around and it worked a treat I was just staying in a little Airbnb like in Trust Devery. but I did a little video on on Rome as well like previous to this one on my channel and there's loads of like Rome content on my TikTok as well if you want to scroll down a little bit but yeah that was fucking sick I'd recommend Rome so much um, and I don't think I even spent that much money. I just drank wine every day, walked around, used public transport a few times, chilled out with my Italian lads and loved life. Um, I was there for like 10 days and I drank so much the white wine, oh my god, it's stunning, the white wine and the um, pasta. Oh my god, I tried this new pasta called Cacio de Pepe. Cascio e Pepe, something like that, but it was the most nicest pasta I've ever tried. But I wish I could have travelled around Italy a bit longer, but I didn't want to spend too much money and um, I was excited to see my friends really and get back to England after like five months in Dubai. So I went home, reunited with my friends, it was still like, what was it like, end of July? So we went Ascot together and just like caught up with my mates really and and just spent a few days in my house because I, I don't really get homesick easy but I was homesick in Dubai and then I can't remember how long I was home for before I met my boyfriend not my current but I don't have a current but before I met the boy I got with I'm going to explain what happened there right now so I think I'd only been home for like a month like a few weeks um, and I kind of always, I kind of know, right, this is a, a side point, I kind of know that I'm never going to want to be in England, I never really want to live here forever, I always want to be travelling, I, I want to travel the world and see different countries before I s decide to settle down in one, what if I what if I prefer Australia to England, do you know what I mean, I haven't been there, so how do I know that, so I always have in my head that I'm never going to be in England for long, I don't want to be, Um I'm never, I don't want to fucking settle down here in the next fucking two years and have kids and marriage and a uh, nine to five. I just don't, I've never, I don't want it. So, it, yeah, it must have been about a month and I met this guy. How did I meet him? Oh, yeah, I met him on Tinder. <laughs> I love Tinder. Um, I really love dating apps. I'm a massive 
like voucher for them. I think they're they just open your um radius. No, yeah, I think dating apps just open you up your options. You meet people you'd have never met otherwise. I always say that like. Yeah, I know it's more romantic to meet someone in person, but just open up. What, you want to shut yourself off to all the other opportunities of all the other people that are too shy to come up in person or that you won't meet because you won't cross paths? Come on, do you know what I mean? But then it's up to you, really. But anyway, so I met. Uh, I started talking to this guy on um, a dating app. He literally met... I have to tell you this story because it's crazy. He just messaged me on, like, a random Thursday night and just said, hi, you're beautiful, what are you doing tonight? Literally just like that. And obviously, usually I'd be like, uh, fuck off. I mean, uh, go away. <laughs> I'm not going to meet you, like, now. Like, we have to talk a little bit. You have to put, you know, we have to plan. You have to tell me what the plan is. I'm not just going to drop everything and come meet you now. But I'll be honest, I looked at his profile, and he had a little tick, so I thought, oh, who is that? So I looked at his profile, and it turns out he was an actor, like, a well, quite, not, like, serious a a list or anything more like a c list but he was a known actor my mum when i showed my mum she knew who he was my sister knew who he was like my auntie knew who he was like they'd all seen him on tv on a show on a popular english soap so i was like this is interesting and me i'm just a sucker for a new experience and he was really fit and he seemed exciting the things he was saying he would seem quite spontaneous and stuff and in my tinder bio i had that i was spontaneous and i was like you know, he brought it up and was like, oh, I thought you were spontaneous. And I was like, oh, fuck it, Joe, you know I'm just going to go. So I literally got ready in 20 minutes and went and met this boy, uh, this actor, round the corner from where I live. He happened to live literally 20 minutes up the road, which I was shocked at because I thought he'd live in London. Like, what are the odds? And um, the date was really amazing. It was such a good date. Um, it was just like, you know, instant attraction, instant infatuation. Um, and don't know about you, but that only happens to me not so often at all, like once, twice a year maybe, if I put myself out there enough. And um, so that was good. And then from there, it was just a fucking whirlwind. Like our second date, we, um, well, our second date was the next day. We went out the next day and he took me up London to meet like a few of his friends in some bar and then we went to a different like house party in Camden with all these other actors with all these cool personalities he was very like he knew so many people he knew so many cool people there was always something to do with him around because he had so many connections and places to be like he was fun he was really fun um and he was a bit of a love bomber as well he was very full on from the beginning he made me feel special um, and I kind of pedestaled him a little bit looking back because he had loads of traits that I admired but you know I have traits that I that were the same as his that I admire in myself but the one trait that made me pedestal him which I didn't have was his career like he knew what he wanted to do with his life um, he was quite set up in what he was doing he had a passion, do you know what I mean? And at that time, it was highlighting for me how much I didn't know what the fuck I was doing with my life. I was still unemployed at this point. Um, and I was thinking, what am I going to do? Like, I'm going to have to get a nine to five soon, go back into, like, office management or admin or whatever the fuck it is that I can do, like, PAM. So it kind of was highlighting for me how much I didn't know what the hell I was doing with my life. So basically, after our second date, he was going home to Jersey, where he lived, um, well not where he lived but where his family lived he was visiting home for like a week um, so he invited me to go to Jersey with him for a third day so that's literally flying across the country so he went the next day and I flew out to Jersey like two days after him we rented like this Airbnb he rented us this like beautiful Airbnb in this countryside like I was there for five days he took me to meet all his friends we had he hosted like this um, rave in his farmyard like he owned this event space we did so many fun things like we, we went we met his whole family like it was ridiculous friends family parties everything um had such a good time so as you can imagine it's got such a whirlwind whirlwind romance type thing from the start and um, so we like we were very different we were very different but I think we just really fancied each other and admired traits that we traits in each other but we weren't necessarily very compatible um yeah we just weren't I don't want to slag him off or anything because he's a good person but we just turned out to be not compatible so 
he did even like grand i've never had like grand gestures and stuff done for me before but it's, if he was on my tiktok at the time you probably saw like he did like this thing where he like put all these fairy lights or like like in this dome and like made me like dinner and surprised me and all this stuff it was, it was really nice at the time um but anyway after that we were together for like we were seeing each other for like a month then we were like boyfriend and girlfriend after like the second jersey trip i did uh, and it lasted all together the whole experience for about three months but it ended eventually because basically he broke up with me because um he was getting all these acting jobs in like he was getting quite on like he he went why can't i talk <laughs> he went without work for a long while because of covid and stuff it's hard for the acting people the performing arts people but he started to get all this work in and i think his priorities just changed and also i think we were starting to like grate on each other a bit like because we weren't compatible in certain ways like i could name a thousand things but like he just didn't get some things i'd say he would take offensively like or get defensive about but it's just my humor and i'm not offensive i'm not an offensive person but he just didn't get it he was from a different place different upbringing like i'm very much like rah, rah, rah. that's a bit like common aren't i a bit sarcastic and stuff um but he just didn't really get that and um i would get defensive about some of the things he said to me as well maybe i was taking him the wrong way as well just not compatible so when he broke up with me i was it had been stewing for like two weeks, you know, you can just feel it in your chest that they're going to break up with you. Like there was a, a clear energy shift, um, but I was too pussy to break up with him um, because I was like invested because I'd spent so much time and it was the first boyfriend I've had in like four years and I wanted to make it work, I wanted to try. So I'm glad he broke up with me because I probably wouldn't have done it for ages, even though I felt like I felt like I, I should have. But I was upset for like one day and then after that I really got over it so quickly because I just knew... He wasn't for me deep down so i was really proud of myself for how quickly i got over that and then um i'd already started working at a new job this was like an office manager job in london and um i hoped that it would be like my previous like, i've always been quite lucky when it comes to like nine to five jobs i've worked in construction for a few years um like document control personal assistant kind of thing office manager and I've always been quite lucky because I've always always really loved the people I work with and the environment. I've worked on building sites and stuff, so it's quite fun. Um, and like, there's loads of banter, and it's just like you work with your mates. It's fun, isn't it? But the, I was hoping my new job was going to be like that. But it wasn't. It was very like old school. Like I found the men there to be quite condescending sexist and like you know like they expected me to make them tea and shit and i'm just not down for that like yeah i'm not fucking 16 years old i'm not new to this i'm an office manager not a tea maker like i would un appreciate it if they made the tea sometimes as well but i just feel i just hate feeling like because i'm a woman i'm being asked to do the shit jobs like don't take advantage of me and don't be fucking sexist do you know what i mean so i wasn't having that I, it was my it was hurting my soul that i was putting up with it, I didn't feel appreciated, I felt bored and my heart just wasn't in it so I wasn't even trying that hard, I was just you know going through the motions every day with no oomph, no pizzazz, no enthusiasm which they could probably sense as well um, but I just didn't know what else to do and it was decent pay, like not amazing but like 30k which is okay, like I earned more than that before so and you know like I just don't, I just didn't feel like it was even worth it but my plan in my head was just to save the money that I make from there and then again go back to my um original plan tra to travel Asia on my own someday and I always plan to go on my own um but this job after like three months or two months sorry it was really getting me down like I seriously think it was affecting my mental health because I got really depressed again this was like September time September and November really and I dyed my head, hair red in this time because I was having a mental breakdown as well I just didn't know what to do this was after a breakup and I was hating my job so I was like you know what I'm gonna dye my hair red but I still love the red hair it's a bit ginger now I'm about to dye it properly red again tomorrow but um so anyway I was depressed in my job was hating life and I just felt stuck again like how I did at the end of 2020 like I was like what am I doing like I don't know what I wanted to do and also I feel like because I'd come back from that experience in Dubai I also now feel like also felt like now I know more 
like I've spent time talking to rich people and successful people. I've been around my ex who was happy in his job and had his passion. And it made me realise how much I wanted that. I want to be successful, but in something that I'm passionate with. And I'd, I felt all this pressure all of a sudden this year for the first time to be successful and do something like out the box. So I started setting up like a VA business, which is a virtual assistant thing I don't know if you've heard of that you can google it because I'm not very good at describing what it is but it's basically like a PA but you're virtual and you are freelance so you can work for as many companies as you want as their PA um, and you can work from anywhere in the world because you're remote right virtual assistant and you can make an absolute killing doing that like you can charge like 25 to 40 pound an hour um, because you save them money um, like rather than them having a normal office manager they can have a virtual assistant because they don't have to pay for the computer for you and the sick pay and blah 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 so that's how you can get away with charging this money so I learned how to build a website I learned all about the VA business I learned like what I've got to do like contractually and blah 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 and I spent like a month like doing that um it's not that I love being a PA like it's not that I that's my goal but it was just the idea I thought of like my main goal is to be able to be free and travel the world and I if it if being a PA if being a virtual assistant would mean that then I would be happy to do that and I would I'd be happy with that I'd be satisfied with that I think I thought um I never actually launched it because basically what happened is about a month ago now I got sacked so I was feeling really depressed I had a week off work sick and then on the Monday I went in to work and they literally sacked me that morning not because I'd done anything wrong but just made redundant basically they knew we were uh, the, the covid restrictions were going to be tightening again and my boss just said you know we don't can't really afford an office manager anymore I just had a dinner break and got myself a snowball if you don't know about snowballs I'm sure you do if you're English but it's advocar this yellow stuff and it it's nice and you put it with lemonade and it just tastes like Christmas to me. But anyway, I just I poured like this much Advocar in it honestly, but it's New Year's Eve Eve, isn't it? Fuck it. So I went home that day and you know what? I felt so free. I felt so f so free and happy. You'd think you'd be sad when you got the sack, but no, I, every time I've ever left a job or, you know, been let go of in my life, which has happened a couple of times over the last two years because of the COVID situation, I've just felt so happy every time because I don't want to bloody be in a nine to five. But that's the truth of it. That's why it feels so good to get the sack. Um, so I came home and I made a TikTok about it. Um, I literally was just saying what I'm saying now to the camera, but in a, like a, a one minute clip, just saying like, do you know what? I feel free. I don't actually give a, a shit that I've had the sack. Um, explained why. And from that video it got a lot more views than I usually get I got a few thousand not a few thousand like a few hundred followers from that video maybe a thousand two thousand it, it was popping off quite a bit um and I was happy with myself for that loads of people related to it and I was like oh I'm glad other people feel the same um so that was that and then the, and that night I sat on hinge um like in my bed like 1 a.m just like flicking through hinge hinge is like tinder right dating app and I came across this guy, he was Canadian, said for, in his profile, Toronto. And I liked him first, and then he matched with me, but he didn't say anything, and I didn't say anything. But then he messaged me and was like, what are we doing tonight? Just straightforward. You can say, see I have a type, like I like him straightforward and confident. <laughs> but um, I said to him, listen, you know, I'm in bed, I've just had the sack, so, but I am free tomorrow because I'm sacked. And he was like, oh, what, oh my God. And the conversation, like, flowed really easily from there. It was like a an hour conversation on Hinge, just back and forth. Basically, he was here on holiday for only, like, a week. And then he was going back to Canada. But he asked me if I would like to go for a drink with him. Um, so the next day, we planned to go to Winter Wonderland together because he didn't even know what Winter Wonderland was. And I was thinking, you know, like, I've just been sacked. What better to do than go on a date to Winter Wonderland the next day? Um, and I, bearing in mind, I still have a bit of savings at this point. I haven't really done anything since I got back from Dubai and I've been saving the last three months at my job. So financially, I still have some money and um, I don't pay rent. I live at home with my family. If you're wondering how the hell am I doing this? I live with my mum, so it's it's easier for obviously some people than others. But 
so I went on that date and when I was on the way to the day I did another TikTok it was just a spare of the moment like oh let me you know post this because the night before that um losing my job one went a little bit you know viral not viral at all but just it got a bit of attention so I thought oh maybe I should keep it up so when I was on the train I did a TikTok like hi guys you know um you're not going to believe this, like, it's only my second day of unemployment and I'm on the way to meet a Canadian from Hinge at Winter Wonderland. It's going to be great. Maybe I'll move to Canada. Like, just funny, like, being half sarcastic and half serious. And, um, I didn't look at my phone, like, after that because I got on the tube after the train and then I was meeting him and we was in Winter Wonderland for, like, two hours before I checked my phone again. The date was going really good, but I don't want to talk too much about because I want to do a whole video about this situation, this day and this, this man. Um... And then I checked my phone like midway through the day and I saw that the TikTok was going viral, the one of me on the train, like it was going viral. Like I don't mean that in just like a, you know, a few thousand, I mean like it was going viral. So my phone was absolutely popping off, like, I was like, what the hell, I started showing him, like what is going on, it had like millions of views, it had um, like thousands of comments, I think it had thousands, hundreds, yeah, thousands of comments and people were asking for updates saying they was invested and blah blah blah. So he was, oh, let's take an update now. So we did another TikTok in Winter Wonderland, like a cute little, like, montage of us on our day, and I put it in the comments of that video. So then that went viral, and then all of a sudden, I gained, like, 60,000 followers in, like, three days. It just didn't stop from that moment. And I'm thinking, oh, my fucking God, this is so exciting. Because I've been doing social media, like, YouTube and stuff for a long time now years and it you know what it's like these days it's an overly saturated place to be um and it's hard to be to get recognized and be what is my phone doing oh you know like it's hard to be to stand out so but all it takes is one video to do well and you it gives you a big boost you know so i was excited that this was all happening and i couldn't believe it, it was so weird all this attention all at once and everyone just so many messages and comments saying, oh, I'm so invested in your story, like, and just so many lovely comments towards me and my character as well, so many people relating to things that I've said in previous videos that they were catching up with, and people coming to my YouTube and watching these, um, and my Instagram and stuff like that, and I was like, what the, what, what the hell is going on this week? Um, I was asked to go on um, a radio show podcast with CeCe Coleman and Pete Wicks, I was um, put in the Sun newspaper, the Daily Mail, whatever it is, um, like people asking to interview me for other stuff as well um and this was all happening and the, as this was all going on I was still like on this journey with this guy that I'd met he's called Matt like after our first date we then went away together on a city break for like three days and then we spent as much time as we could together before he was going back to Canada and I was documenting the whole thing on my TikTok so people were just getting more and more invested um and so yeah, so I don't want to talk too much about like the relationship with him like, because I want to do a whole video about it but basically yeah so my TikTok now as it stands that was like four weeks, three weeks ago all this happened, I think four weeks ago um, so now I have like 80,000 followers on TikTok, it grows, it's growing every single day, I'm so happy, it makes me so motivated and it's just like I I am creative like that's what I like doing like I was moaning like a few months ago because I didn't feel fulfilled in what I was doing for work I've never wanted to work a nine to five I wanted to do something that made me passionate I want to work for myself I want to be able to do something where I can travel the world and I feel like all this has happened like in like a magical type of way like the way these series of, of events has unfolded do you know what I mean like this has opened a door for me to be able to earn money doing what I like doing which is just chatting shit really just like talking to a camera and just being creative and I know some people watch and be like oh yeah so creative making TikToks but honestly it is you don't get what goes into it like you have to think of like multiple ideas a day even if they're silly like it's still there's still smarts behind it like you need to be smart um and I really love it and people seem to like it so it makes me really happy and fulfilled and it leaves me feeling like excited for the future like what could happen if my account keeps growing and all the things I could do with my life like and, th and all the people you can reach and help like it's just a really rewarding job I feel like it would be 
But anyway, like a week ago, I got signed to management, like a creative management company that contacted me. So now I can make money, like with brand deals and, you know, music ads and things like that. I had a couple of them already and I only signed with him like a week ago. So that's just so good. I'm so happy with that. And what I haven't mentioned is that me and the Canadian Bay, which basically all the updates are on my TikTok. So if you haven't seen, please go over and watch because it's literally constant updating situation over there. Um, but like, it's like, I really like him. Like, we still really like each other. He went home after like five days of us being together over in England to Canada, but we are still in touch. We FaceTime every single day. Um, well, not every single day, but we talk every day, we FaceTime. And we plan to go to Thailand in three weeks time. <laughs> so isn't that fucking bizarre? Like I've wanted to go to Thailand and that was always my original plan, like Asia on my own for all these years. And then I've met someone, he comes along at the time where I got sacked and didn't know what I was doing in my life. All of a sudden I go viral and he wants to go traveling in Asia as well. And we both really like each other. What the hell? <laughs> like, so that's a whole thing. And I feel like this is why people invested over there as well. Or it might be you who's watching it. Thank you if you're one of those people. Um, but yeah, like, so the next part of our journey is going to Thailand together. And the last few weeks have been really stressful, the last week and week or two especially, because of all the problems that come up with travel, with COVID and stuff. It was so fine, like a month ago, wasn't it, to do what you want. It seemed like it was getting a bit back to normal with travel, but a bit easier. But just over the last two weeks, a lot of new rules have come into place and different countries are doing different things. And it feels like no one really knows what the solid rules are. There's no proper guidance, like especially somewhere like Thailand. It's so confusing. But trust me, I've done so much research. I know what's best. And basically, Matt's got COVID or he had COVID a week ago. And there is a chance that you can still test positive up to 90 days after you've had COVID. And if that was the case, then it would be a whole horror story. Like, he wouldn't be able to get on the plane or he'd get taken to hospital when we were in Thailand and quarantine for 14 days. And we just don't want that. We just want a smooth sailing situation and we want to do it together. So our original flights, we're pushing them back two weeks. And so we were meant to be going next week on Sunday, but now we're planning to go mid-January. So I won't lose any money on the flights, so that's good. I haven't got like unlimited funds, which I'm always moaning about on TikTok as well, because obviously I'm still not working. I've been I've been sacked and I haven't got a job since in a month because all this stuff has been going on. I don't want a bloody job anyway. I don't want to go back to that. So um I've got I've still got savings, I've got enough. I haven't got as much as I'd like to to go to fucking travelling Asia with, but I've got enough for a, a few months in a cheap country like that in thailand and matt has got a lot of money as well or like not you know yeah i think he's, he's got a lot of money he's got enough money he's been wanting to do this for years his, his goal has been to save for traveling the same as me it's really weird um and we're just like the same person but any, as i say i'm gonna do a whole video about him hopefully when we're there so um so yeah um i don't know like, i'm just so excited <laughs> like this is like the next chapter in my life like I just feel like it's going to be a whole new beginning for me. And I feel like content is so much better in a different country, like when you're travelling and stuff. It just looks prettier and it's easier and you're more inspired and happy. And I, it's always just called me Thailand and Bali. They've always just called me. I just have a... Something's telling me I need to be there. It's always... I've always thought that. Originally, I did worry, like, what if this boy, like, you know, it doesn't work out or something and everyone, like, doesn't care anymore on my TikTok and social media. But then even when I do videos just being me on my own, people are so supportive and lovely and the compliments are like compliments I've never received in my life. I'm just overwhelmed by it all. It's so love. It's just so nice to hear all these nice things coming from strangers. Um, I really appreciate every, Like I read every comment that I get. Obviously, I sound like a fucking, I sound like one of them people, don't I? I know. But I know it's cheesy, but it's true though. I read all of them, like, sometimes there's, sometimes there's only 10 comments on a video, sometimes there's hundreds, I, but I always will read all of them, I can't get off my phone actually, I need to really work on that, because when your notifications are so mad and you're not used to it being like that, when it is like that, you can't get off your phone, it's like addicting to just like refresh it and see what everyone's saying, and what like, videos people like and blah blah blah, but yeah, I feel really hopeful for the future, I'm excited what's going to happen, this is what I need, like, 
I felt so down like only a month ago and now I feel like full of like hope for the future and excitement and that's just all I want out of life just to be excited every day so yeah that's my 2021 recap really um I will be in Thailand in three weeks I'm going to do a couple more videos um before then I want to um do one about my whirlwind romance uh, with Matt but maybe I'll wait till I'm with him to do that I don't know let me know what you think should I just do it now like, I'll do it in the week um I have been trying to stay in like, and not get covid because I don't want to set us back even further so I'm trying not to spend money so I have more money to travel and I'm just trying to stay in so we don't get covid but it's new year's eve tomorrow and I'm like do I go out because we've been invited to like this penthouse party thing in Mayfair and I'm like damn that sounds bougie do you know what I mean we should really go like we get to wear like gowns and it's like black tie events gonna be so good but I don't know you haven't made mind up but let me know what you're doing I hope everyone has a fantastic New Year's Eve and if you're one of those people that have been watching my videos recently and supporting me on there then I appreciate you so so much um and feel free to message me anytime any place anywhere what <laughs> just feel free to message me some people message me and they're like oh you know they have questions and stuff and i always will reply so you can always message me anything or comments or anything i like to re respond all the time because it's fun so have a lovely new year's i hope you're happy remember to do your gratitude in the morning it does make a difference remember to follow my instagram and my tiktok follow, uh, subscribe on here if you haven't already cheers i'll see you soon bye be 25 this year. What?